You know what? We're gonna do a fucking million dollars in a year. You might be talking to some billionaire or some multimillionaire who could change your life in one conversation. One of my biggest aha moments with the ups and downs in that journey towards the 10 million is that the mind is a very, very powerful tool to have and to exploit. Go live in Bali. If you could build a business online, you could go live there. And I was blown away. I'm seeing these like eight bedroom mansions with three pools like on the beach and it's like $800 a night. I'm like, oh my God, in Miami, that would would be eighty thousand dollars a night you started out went through all those tough times left the rat race ended up blowing up this course business to ten million dollars you're also an author you write a newsletter let's unpack that welcome back to the virtual ventures podcast our guest today is the remarkable virgil brewster a visionary in online education and digital entrepreneurship he built a ten million dollar course empire empowering countless individuals to unlock their potential virgil's influence extends to his newsletter with two thousand 500 readers and he embraces the digital nomad lifestyle from the enchanting shores of bali get ready to be inspired as we dive in his captivating journey on the virtual ventures podcast episode 17. Virgil, how are you? Thank you so much for coming on the show, my man. Really excited to have you here. Yeah, I'm good. Like I'm in Bali right now, seven o'clock at night and boiling. So yeah, what can I say? <laughs> Life is good. When you can walk on flip-flops all day long, then what can go wrong, right? So great on this side of the globe. That is amazing. It is seven o'clock in the morning, my time here in Miami, Florida. So, and it is also boiling. I bet it's already <laughs> over 90, 92 degrees and crazy humid. And I can also walk in flip flops almost anywhere. So I can definitely relate to you from that perspective and love that you're over there. And that's something that I definitely want to talk about down the road. But for people who are regular listeners, you know, we get right into things. Virgil, tell me a little bit about yourself. Who are you? What is a little bit about your journey? And let's build off that. Yes, well, I'm Virgil. If you don't know me, I'm just a Dutch guy who is a little bit sick in the head and was fed up with uh, <laughs> with the cold in Holland. I grew up in Holland, so you know my accent will be a little bit funny. So I'm sorry about that. I was always an entrepreneurial type of guy because I wanted to escape the cold. And I did numerous things. I've, I've started in the television industry, eventually set up a personal training business in Ibiza, Spain talking about the total swap, total flip, right? And eventually uh, found courses because trading dollars for, for, for time wasn't my thing. That was what I was doing for years. So I found courses and I thought, hey, could I leverage this? And, and then I started on a journey where I started learning about it and met two incredible business partners. We built up a business. We sold e-commerce courses, blew it up to $10 million, earned ourselves like a Russell Brunson Two Comma Club X Award, which we're really proud of. And now I'm, I'm helping entrepreneurs implementing courses to increase revenues in their business and I love flip-flops and by the way before I continue I love Miami it's by far my most favorite city in the US so uh, if I ever live somewhere else in the world it would be definitely Miami I'm jealous I'm jealous I, have, I love that and and next time you're here we need to go grab a coffee or go grab lunch or something I would love that so happy to hear that you love Miami I also think it's a beautiful city been blessed to kind of grow up here my whole life so I agree with you. It is an amazing city. Let's get right into it. What was it like building a $10 million course business? Take us through that. $10 million is not a small number. Let's unpack it. Yeah, it, it, you know what it is? Every time I talk about it, I'm still in shock about it, right? Because we never intended to do it. And that sounds weird because you don't start a business to think, you know, I'm going to start a $10 million business. You start, I'm going to do a business that does 20K, right? So, but we did an outrageous thing at the time. Like I said before, I, I'm not an ordinary guy who went to business school and know how to write business plans and so that sort of thing. So we basically bootstrapped the whole damn thing. And me and my business partners at the time decided or said basically like, you know what? We're going to do a fucking million dollars in a year. And we had no clue how, right? And we knew it would be a course, but we didn't know what type of course. And I was always a fan of Russell Brunson. I read his book, Dotcom Secrets, and he always talks about bootstrapping it, ask the audience what they want, give it to them. And so we did. And the answer that came back was that people wanted to learn about e-commerce. And that's what we gave them. And through that journey, we kept on running into walls, you know, and uh, we kept realizing that, okay, what is, what is this big wall we keep on running into? Because there was a point where we only could reach like 20K, 30K a month. And for a lot of creators, that's a lot of money, right? For us, don't get me wrong, 
for us back at the day, there was loads of money, but we were in masterminds where we saw people make 50K, 100K, 300K, half a million and a million a year. And we're like, we are 20K, you know, it felt like really, really bad. So the thing that I learned the most besides, you know, building funnels, building a sales team, get the right offer in front of the right people. The most important thing that I learned in that journey is that it is all in the mind. If you don't put your head to, to it, you, you're you not going to make it. You know, you can have the best business tactics, the best business plans. But if in your head you believe that it is not doable, you're not going to make it. So that was one of my biggest aha moments with the ups and downs in that journey towards the 10 million that the mind is a very, very powerful tool to have and to exploit. Yeah, let's get a little deeper into that. Kind of talk more on on what the realization was when you realized it was very mental and maybe some of the hard times that came with that and then some of the good things and positives that came from realizing that. Yeah, and I, I remember a day that we were sitting in uh, in, in, in Ibiza. I, I, we, our whole company was, was remote and back then I lived in Ibiza, Spain. And I remember I get, got a message and the WhatsApp message read like, we are fucked. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, well... <laughs> Normally, when I get a message like that, we joke it off, right? We say, yeah, yeah, we're fucked. Let's go on. But then the next message was, no, seriously, we're fucked. So I jumped on the phone and what was the problem? The problem was that Facebook, our friend Mark Zuckerberg, blocked all our Facebook accounts. So everything was done. And being said that all our traffic came through Facebook ads. We mastered Facebook ads and we spent a lot of money. We, we, we scaled up to over a grand a day. But that day they blocked us. So we were stuck. We had no idea what to do. And that is the moment where you realize like, okay, what's next? Because all of a sudden we went to a 50K a week income to zero because we couldn't advertise anymore. And of course we had an email list and we're pushing stuff to that email list, but we were stuck. And then was the moment moment that the mind kicks in right so we were sitting there and then 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 i said to myself okay we have a choice or we're fucked and we don't do anything we roll over and we're dead or are we gonna find a way so after a couple of days in total stress we found a moment where we dropped everything and walked away from it and that was weird because one of, of my mentors told me listen if you are in shit don't try to solve it step away and fresh ideas will come to you and it happened. So we went paintballing. <laughs> you know, we went paintballing. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Our whole business was, was going to shit. And we went out paintballing. And while I was shooting at my, you know, when you do paintballing, you cannot shoot in, in a one meter range. You know, and you know, boys, yeah. you know, we shoot like 20 centimeters on people's legs. That's what happened. <laughs> so I shot, I shot one of my, my, my marketing guys on the leg. And then he said, fuck. And I was like, hey, what's wrong with you? And then he, then he said something weird. He said, you know what? Why don't we go to ex-Facebook guys? And maybe they can help us out of nothing, right? I just shot a whole whole magazine of, of paintballs on his leg. And he was telling this, this weird sentence. And I was like, okay, what do you mean? And he said, well, there must be ex-Facebook people out there who know how this works, right? And that was our aha moment in the middle of a paintball ground. So we went investigating and there was... There were three ad execs from Facebook primarily, and they, they left the company and they helped people like us who got banned. So, and they got us up and running. It took over, over two weeks, took a long time, but they got us back up and running. We were back in the game. But the lesson that we learned there was that when you are in shit, and trust me, when you're running a business, you're going to run into shit, a lot of shit. Take a oh, step yeah. back. You know what I mean, right, Andres? You know what I mean? You're going to run to shit. Oh, yeah. If you are, take a step back and do something completely different, something complete that, that goes against everything. And what you will notice, you will get fresh ideas. And that I kept with me all the time. And it works all the time for me until this day and also for the clients I work with. So, yeah, that, that's basically in a nutshell, my biggest learning curve with running towards $10 million in sales. I love that. And I, and I think that's super important to highlight a lot of people when things start to get really bad just continue to spin their wheels and stay in the same place dealing with the same crap but sometimes you like really do need to step away clear your mind and like you said good ideas come and it wasn't like this crazy idea that you guys had that revolutionized the game it was actually pretty simple it's like how can we work with what we have right now there's got to be a solution we're not the only people that have gotten our facebook ads accounts banned let's be <laughs> honest this happens to a ton of businesses there's got to be some smart people who have decided, hey, like if I know how to fix this, I can make good money off of helping clients do it. So it's awesome that you guys kind of came to that realization. And I love that you did it over paintball. Paintball is an awesome <laughs> game. 
like such a fun sport to go play. It's such a good team bonding experience as well. So from a like CEO, founders, like C-level executives on your side, what a great idea to go like just shake things up when things are going bad. And look at the amazing results that came from it. So let's talk more like We've talked about your course business. I know that's the highlight. Let's go back to the beginning of Virgil. What made you want to be an entrepreneur? I know you said you wanted to leave that cult. You didn't want to keep trading your time for money. Let's hear about that transition. Well, you know, it was like, obviously, I come from an immigrant family. Uh, my, my parents immigrated from, from Suriname, is a country in South America, to Holland, which was a former colony. And of course, they worked hard to get a sort of great life for themselves in other countries. So logically, they expected from their children, me and my sister, that we would do great at school and I become the next brain surgeon, right? And basically what they brought up was like a rebellious kid who just cannot deal <laughs> with authority at all and didn't want to be put in a mold. So that was frustrating for them when I skipped school and didn't do anything with my life in their eyes. But the thing was, is that there was this drive, right? That I could not understand why my parents worked so hard uh, until an age of retirement. And I remember my, my dad became 50 and then he had 10 more years and I was invited. I was just a kid to, 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 to this office where I worked. And I was amazed by all these people because people were talking about, I'm here 60 years and I, I'm 35 years here. And I couldn't even hold my attention for three minutes at school, right? So let alone <laughs> work for a job for 15 odd years. So that was the first realization yep. that that was not for me. And I read a lot and books were my thing, you know, were my escape because I was not, was not good with school. I was, I'm dyslectic. I kind of spell right, right? You know, my sentences are probably fucked up sometimes in English, you know? So I read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and that mm -hmm. opened my eyes. And if you haven't read that book at all, that is game changing because I started to understand the concept of assets and liability. So basically that you work for something to pay for something or that you work for something that in the future will generate an income. So when I got that concept, Concept. That was the first time that I thought, oh, this is amazing. This is magic. I need to find out everything about this concept. And that's what I did. And obviously, I messed up over 50 times if I start counting. I've been in multi-level marketing, yeah. And I sold little creams and, and makeup stuff. And in Amsterdam, you have the red light district, right? So my first thing with sales, my sales experience was with my makeup and my creams, I went to the red light district to sell, sell it to the working girls there. And that was really a good experience to understand, hey, people actually want something, buy something when you are good by talking, you know, you can keep a conversation, you can easily yep. sell something. And that is that is a, a little part of my entrepreneurial journey that, that, that really shaped me over, over, over the decades that came after that because sales and storytelling was something that I always did and always took with me and everybody already does it in a way because when you're with your friends you're not going to tell like a weird story right yeah today I met this girl and then I she said hi and then I walked away no when you're with your friends you talk you know what I walked the streets and I saw this girl in this mini skirt and I looked at her and you know I, my heart went crazy and your friend said yeah what did you do so you know you get this exciting story you share with your friends and then the funny part is that a lot of people when they go online they talk boring i met this girl and it was nice and we got married and then you know that was weird for me so i always had an element of storytelling and i think that the element of storytelling should be present in any business model no matter what you do what you sell who you are if you tell a story and find those emotional triggers in people you're always able to go ahead in life whatever you want to do so in a nutshell <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more on so many points that you just made there. One, if you're listening now, go read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That was also the book for me that was a huge game changer. Just at a fundamental level, starting to understand things a little differently. Like you said, that certain investments bring money back to you. There's certain ways to to allocate money the right way and, and saving and investing. I just think that's a very great book for anybody trying to get their financial journey on track. Two, I am a huge advocate. I do not care what you do in life, what your job is. You should always be learning how to sell. You should always have some type of sales tactics, some type of sales mindset. Selling yourself is the start to anything. And then lastly, storytelling is an absolute catalyst for success. If you are a good storyteller, if you can articulate what you want to deliver very crisp, very concise with energy, with excitement, like you're doing right now, you will captivate whoever you're talking to. It does not matter. 
You will be so surprised at the level of attention people will give you if you come in and speak with a good presence, a good attitude. Like I think that is the most overlooked skill that you can acquire. And it's there's all these crazy courses and all these things. You don't even have to go do any of that. Just go out and talk. Just go put yourself in uncomfortable situations, networking events, mixers, parties, like go just throw yourself out there. Force yourself to go have these weird conversations, talk to people you're not used to. You will be so surprised, one, at the way that you react and how fast you will grow. And then two, you never know like really who's the person you're talking to, like who's next. And that's one of the reasons why I love Miami and I'm sure Bali is the same thing. It's like, I could be anywhere. I could be sitting at the bar here at one of my favorite restaurants. I could look over to the person next to me, start up a conversation, which most people would think that's weird, but it's not. You gotta be able to talk to anybody. And you might be talking to some billionaire or some multimillionaire who could change your life in one conversation. That is super powerful. Like people need to put more time and effort into learning how to network, talk, like articulate yourself vocally. That's going to be the phrase. How to articulate yourself vocally is extremely important. So I love that you brought that up and that that was such like a big catalyst for you. So you started out sales, did went through all those tough times, left the rat race, ended up blowing up this course business to $10 million. You're also an author. You write a newsletter. Let's unpack that. Newsletters are extremely popular. Email lists are super important and impactful. I have a lot of listeners who really like newsletters, who want to start their own newsletters. Maybe let's get into some detail on how you created it, how you were able to gain the over thousands of subscribers. Like, let's really dive in on that. Yeah, I'm happy that you bring up the concept of newsletters because I'm 48 now, you know, so I grew up with newsletters. There was nothing else in the beginning. Great uh, entrepreneurs like Frank Kern back in the day, Matt Fury. I don't know if the guy lives even, but he's, he's one of the all time OGs in marketing. And uh, Dan Kennedy are the ones who really, really made it, made the newsletter concept big back in the day by copying writing and i love to see that the newsletters never died because you all know i don't need to sit here and tell you that the twitter and facebook and linkedin they own your audience and if they change something you lose it all you all understand that you all have read about it so i'm not going to go into that point but what i do want to want to bring home is that a newsletter is the single best thing to sell anything i cannot find any other more powerful tool where you can sell your goods and service in such a great way so how can you st- First of all, start with a newsletter. Let's let's take that that bit out. Well, first of all, you need to build your audience, obviously, right? So, and, and and my suggestion is that you always do it on one platform first. I see a lot of people go to LinkedIn, Instagram, everything at the same time, and please go do that. But if you want to be efficient and you take your business seriously, you need to double down always on one thing. In my case, now building my personal brand for my newsletter called the Building Block, shameless plug, right? I use Twitter and I have a very simple funnel there. So basically, I share stories, like we mentioned before. I share incredible stories about my life. If you are really worrying about, I have nothing to, to say or nothing to share, or well, trust me, something is always happening that you find boring and somebody else find interesting. And when you can attach a lesson to that story, you're good to go with all audience building. I know there are a lot of tactics out there, but this is just mine. It's very simple and it works for me. So then what is really important is that from your Twitter, you bring people into your newsletter. And why? Because Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, they're all short form type of content. It is video based, text based. But the thing is, you want to create longer form on your newsletter in the form of stories in the newsletter and a story where every time at the end of that newsletter, and this is important, every time at the end of the newsletter, you sell. Very soft. And people accept that because you deliver so much value in the form of stories. When you're going to do it boring, you're going to blow you off. But if you tell interesting stories, people will buy. So what is the simple funnel I use? You are going to create content, in my case, on Twitter. Now, when somebody follows me, I have a a little software program. It's called HIFO. I don't know if I pronounced the name right. But what it does, it is basically created to sell automated DMs. And I'm not a fan of automated DMs. But the beautiful thing is, it has a welcome message for new followers. And that's the only thing I use. So somebody signs up, then they get an automated message with a cool story where I say, hey, I'm dancing here in Bali. I'm so happy. My phone pings. I'm, I'm drinking my coconut and there you are. My dog, Boomy, is barking in the background. You know what? I'm so happy. I have a gift for you. Here it is. Download it now. So what happens there? I tell again a little story and people go on my newsletter. The beauty is, is that over 40% of people who follow actually take me up on that deal. So I built my wow. newsletter for free. It's, it's enormous. It's very high. It is really cool. It's yeah. high because you do it 
in such a funky way. What I see a lot, you know, you see you get a lot of auto DMs and yourself and me. And then you see, hi, I am Virgil. I am a course creator. I have a newsletter where I explain how you can launch a course. I'm the best. Oh, by the way, I made 10 million. I'm cool. <laughs> Everybody would think, what on earth is this idiot about? <laughs> You're so fucking boring. Get out. I spam you. Block you. Out. So that simple funnel, Twitter, welcome message, newsletter, and create a very engaging newsletter with, with where you tell stories with a lesson attached to it, same concept, and at the end you sell. That is my mini funnel, and you can attach anything. You can sell anything basically there. It's so cool. Trust me, it's so cool. Try it. That's awesome. And yeah, I actually just started a newsletter. I want to use it as a way to highlight the episodes I have each week and have another way to deliver the, the guests that I have on the show, their story to my audience. So, and, and that's just a new journey. Started, I think, two weeks ago. Have wow. four subscribers, which is, hey, you got to start somewhere. Four, big number four. You got to start somewhere. And if those four people are interested in reading it, I'm happy to put in the work and send it out each week. But I agree. It's, it's very powerful to have the audience at your disposal like you do with an email list. Because... Even though it's said a million times, I still don't think people respect how serious this is. If your whole platform is built on a social media, that social media has the ability to pull the plug at any moment. And I think that even takes us back to you losing your ads page. Like it's like, hey, we're building a thirty, forty thousand dollar a month revenue business, and in the snap of a finger, it's gone because Facebook decided they don't want to cater to us anymore. That is really powerful because I mean, you spend a lot of time building a huge audience following a funnel of money at the end of the day is really what it is. And at the snap of a finger, the platform can take that away from you. That's really scary. So if you're not really building for that as a possibility by getting your email list and people to your website and people to kind of off of the platforms that you don't have control of, you're putting yourself at a major risk. And I think that newsletters are becoming more and more popular. I feel like honestly, people are getting really back into reading a lot more than they used to. Maybe it's just me getting a little older, but I see tons of people reading again, like enjoying books, sharing books with other people. Newsletters are extremely popular. And like, I think that's great. I think people need to continue to educate themselves, learn. And I love that that's kind of the message that you put out too. It's like, be really interesting. <laughs> Don't be boring. Like it sounds like a simple concept, but it's, it's not that easy to not be like boring, especially if you're putting yourself out there on social media daily, because people like to say, oh, look how much fun it is to be a creator. It, it is hard like it let's be honest it's hard it's not easy to show up every day online it's not like your regular job where if you don't feel like really taking meetings you can hide behind the computer and if you don't really feel like working that hard you can hide behind the computer if you're a creator and you're putting content out online one people are going to notice if they're not getting their regular content if they're like a cult follower two people are going to analyze exactly what you're putting out 24 seven. So you better be delivering the type of content you typically do. So it's like you really got to work and like be creative, be fun. And I think that's like a good thing to kind of like tie this all back together is Bali. Like you're in Bali now. That place is super famous for digital nomads and people who are building online to go move there. It's extremely expensive to get there. But once you get there, the prices are amazing. You can live in these amazing houses. You can enjoy a, a cheaper lifestyle by not sacrificing the luxury aspect. Let's kind of take it home with how did you end up in Bali? How does it like living in Bali? And is it really that haven for creators like yourself? Well, to start with how did I end up here with my e-commerce course business, we used to bring our team here. So that's how I come to really know Bali really well, because like you say, it is a digital nomad haven. The beauty of Bali is, is that you have different aspects. You can go into the big influencer style lifestyle where you go in the South, into Changu, where you're going to drive with your scooter and your headset and be cool. And then, and then you know, flex your, your, your packs and everything. <laughs> or you can go more into the East or the North of the island, which is way more quieter, but the whole island has incredible entrepreneurs everywhere. And the thing is, is that like you, you explained earlier, like when you go in Miami to a cafe, you can just bump into a millionaire, right? Well, here that happens very often because people love water sports like surfing Well, I'm into free diving and the free diving community are people. And I didn't realize that my free diving instructor, like a master free diver is like this Bitcoin millionaire guy. And when you start talking, 
like, yo, what? And you're teaching free diving uh, for 150 bucks an hour? What? And then he said, That's awesome. I just love it. I just love it. So, you know, you meet so many incredible, inspiring people that share the message that you need to do what you love. And that's why I love Bali so much. And in Amsterdam and where I come from, or even in Ibiza, Spain, everybody asks you, what are you doing? How, you know, it's more about work. And here in Bali, it's more about living. Because let's be honest here, right? Why do you build a business? I'm going to be honest here. I chased a lot of money up to much, up till two years ago. You know, I was the same. I thought I need to have cash, 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 cash. But then in the end of the day, when you have all that cash, then at some point, what's next? I thought that was the end, right? If you have all the cash in the world, you're financially free. What else do you need? And that is when it hits. You need purpose. And you find mm. purposeful people in Bali. And that is what I love. So I invite everybody to come. If you're in Bali, hook me up on my on my Twitter DM. I'm in the east of Bali, not in the south, with my cool headset and my motorbike and everything. I'm in, I'm in the in a in a more quieter part. But please send me a message and come and see me and Andres. Come over, brother. Come over. You gonna love it. Yeah, it's it's definitely long overdue. I think I remember like maybe one or two months ago. I finally was like, all right, I keep hearing people talk about Bali, go live in Bali. If you could build a business online, you could go live there. And I was blown away. Granted, the flight is expensive. I think for me to get there from Miami, it's like $1,800 or something like that to fly, which is fine. I mean, you're flying like across the world. But I was looking at like the Airbnbs and the houses and man, I could live like a king. People <laughs> are going to look and think that I'm like making a billion dollars a year. I'm seeing these like eight bedroom mansions with three pools like on the beach and it's like $800 a night. I'm like, oh my God, in Miami, that would be $80,000 a night. So I think yeah. I will take you up on that offer. I, I do want to come to Bali. I think it's amazing. One, I'm just a huge advocate for travel. I think like at a young age, one, I'm thankful for my parents for allowing me at a young age to I mean, trust me enough to go travel Europe and see a bunch of things right when I got out of high school. And I think it's really important for people listening, like travel is huge. I mean, you'll learn so much about different cultures and the way people operate and just I mean, so many things you can't learn in a classroom that I think are super important. So I want to make that point because I think it's something that's completely overlooked. Travel is so important to development, growth. So go do that. Go put yourself in some weird situations and go figure it out. And then two, it's just like, just go find somewhere where you're happy. Like if you have the ability, if you worked hard and can create income off of your laptop and you don't need to be tied to anywhere, Go find a place like Bali where you can find purpose and enjoy yourself. So I commend you for that. I commend you for enjoying the life that you built from working really hard and achieving all of the things that you want. And now you're rewarding yourself with this amazing life out there in Bali where you're able to free dive and, and go enjoy yourself. So awesome. Virgil, a question that I always ask guests as we start to wrap up the show. This is just my way to learn a little bit more about you and then let the audience know what's exciting and maybe what to follow you on your journey for. But the simple question question is, what are you excited about in the near future? Well, I'm excited to reach like a 30 meter depth with free diving. <laughs> that sounds Hey. Very silly. But the thing is, when you're free, and I'm gonna, I'm an advocate for free diving. Why? Because it calms your mind and it teaches you so much about yourself. Because this is you in the ocean, one of the biggest natural elements in the world. So yeah, I'm looking really, truly really looking forward to dive deep uh, to find myself, basically. And uh, that is something besides working with all all the clients and working with incredible creators to build and launch their courses. I love to do that. But when you ask me what I'm truly looking forward to is to dive to 30 meters of depth on one breath because that will not change my mind. It will change my life as for an achievement, but it is the most incredible feeling in the world. So if you ever want to try something exciting and you have done skydiving and you've done rafting and you've done all, you've done drinking tequila, you've done the weed <laughs> in Amsterdam, I would like to inspire you to do a free diving course and go on a journey within and you are going to be amazed. I promise you that. That's, just, uh, wow. that's my thing. That, that's an amazing answer. I love that. I always get excited to hear guests answers for this. And I love when it is something personal. We sometimes get so wrapped up in business that it's like, man, there's other things in life that you can enjoy. And like you've worked your butt off, like go find these hobbies and passions that you can really like go enjoy disconnect. I think it's amazing. And, and I love that answer. Virgil, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been an amazing episode. 
it has been so interesting to hear your perspective, how you've grown, all of these different ways you found that like to make money and, and to see where the journey has led you to right now. I'm sure people are going to absolutely love this episode. If you're still listening, make sure to support us, like, subscribe, comment. I always forget to say this because at the end of the day, it's not the priority. We're here for the guests to hear their story. So I'm sorry for always forgetting to mention that. But if you did make it this far, help me out, help us grow so we can continue to get amazing guests like Virgil on the show. Again, Virgil, thank you so much. It has been an absolute pleasure meeting you. And I cannot wait to continue to stay connected and hopefully get together in Bali or here in Miami. We are going to do that. Absolutely. Yeah, guys, I, I like to second that. 100% subscribe to the show. You know what it is. When you support creators who are hosting podcasts, that will help people who are growing. And now I am in the fortunate position to be a guest on incredible podcasts like these. But if the show gets more popular, one day you will sit on this, this chair and that will help you enormously because when you help others, you help yourself and we help each other. That is what this whole creator space is about so let's support each other and uh, thank you andres for having me for sure and, and last thing virgil i know i always link everybody's stuff in the description so people can follow you interact with you i do feel like i need to cater to the lazy people that won't even click the beautiful description that we write out for them twitter's your main area maybe just read your twitter handle out loud so anybody following anybody listening can go follow you and connect with you because i think that'd be really important yeah, for sure. If you like to hang out with me and do some crazy shit, find me on Twitter <laughs> at DVirgilBrew. Don't ask me why I had to have this handle because I have no clue why. But that's the handle. <laughs> Come and find me. Send me a DM. And uh, yeah, please send a message and I get back to you. Andres, thank you again. Awesome. And, uh, guys, peace out. Thank you. Thank you. See you.